Hey folks. Well, this is the first canoe I ever built. Well, not ever built. I built a couple before this one. This is the first canoe I built of my own design. This is the original prototype for my Ripple 14 foot 36 inch beam canoe. After I built this one, I wasn't really happy with the with the shear. There just wasn't enough to find shear on it and the bottom was a little flatter than I wanted. And anyways, I scrapped the, the forms for this one and I redrew forms, which are the forms that I still use in my current Ripple 2 design, which I'll show you in a little bit here when we finish up. But what I wanted to show you today was how I converted this, this old canoe into a sailing canoe. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because I think I'm probably going to sell this and, and kind of kind of uh, reduce our, our fleet here a little bit. Since I'm building a new canoe, we're going to get rid of one or two. So before I do, I wanted to document how I built this just in case those of you who are aspiring sailing canoers and are kind of puzzling over how to rig it, I can show you how I did it. So to balance things out, first of all, we, I sit in the bow seat facing backwards. And so the mast partner is fixed to the floor of the canoe just uh, in front of the uh, stern seat. So what I did is I built a, a rudder and I can zoom in on all of this in a little bit and show you more details about how I built it. Basically, everything I built for this thing, I built out of scrap lumber that I had laying around. Now I had a hole in, in the breastplate of the canoe for, for a line. So there's just a carriage bolt and a washer and a wing nut. And then this bracket or the rudder then is fixed. It's not going to go anywhere. And then I made my own pintle and gudgeons out of just some one inch aluminum angle metal that I attached. And there's a pin on here so it's removable. And then there's another wing nut here so the, the rudder itself can move up and down. So it's important when you're starting out. <laughs> I realized I hadn't sailed this thing for a couple of years. I started out in shallow water, so I didn't have the, the rudder down at all. And so I tried to get it down while I was underway, which isn't a great idea. So I ended up having to kind of bang it down with the paddle. But you want to start with your rudder in, in a down position. And this wing nut you don't want so tight that it won't move, but that's that's a safety feature in case you hit something that rudder will, will pop up. So then I have a a tiller that there's just a pin back here and that's affixed here. Pins in there. And so, here's my hiking stick. And then I got a little piece of line on there just in case the thing gets away from me. So I like to, if I'm trying to trim the sail or do something, I'll just take that, that line and just sit on it. And that way the rudder will pretty much stay pretty much straight. So there's the rudder. For the mast, I went with permanently epoxying a mast partner to the bottom of the canoe. So this is just some, I think it's like inch and a quarter conduit. And I'll show you the mast here in a little bit, how that, how that works. But that's really the only thing on this canoe that isn't removable that would, you know, prevent you from using this just as a, a paddling canoe. So that stays on there, but that's not a big deal. 
So this contraption here, this is just a, a bracket that I have stops that I glued and screwed to the base of it so that those slide right up against the, the gunnel. And this is positioned just behind the, the back of the stern seat, which in this case is the bow seat. And then these little pieces of wood, and this is all ash that I use. So the entire, all the rigging, everything is either ash or cedar, white cedar. So that's not going anywhere. And then I notched out a portion of the hexagon out of the wood because I built my mast as a hexagon. I'll show you that next. So a person certainly doesn't need anything terribly elaborate to make a mast for a sailing canoe. You can just go buy a closet rod or, or something, but of course I had to make it a little more complicated. And I cut, what are they, inch and a half by half inch strips of white cedar that then I beveled each of them on the table saw, each 30 degrees, and then I laid them out with a piece of tape underneath them and I epoxied all of the joints and then I rolled the thing up and taped it in several places to act, act as a clamp. And so I, I did that because I wanted this, this mass step to have a, you know, a pipe that I could put the mast around it on the outside. I thought that'd be the easiest. And then I wanted to have a halyard because I wanted to be able to, to raise and lower that sail. That's a, an important safety feature with a sailing canoe. Be able to drop that mast if you get in trouble. And so with being hollow, it uh, makes that a lot easier. Now, it's big, I admit that, but it's, it's, it's super light. I mean, the thing weighs hardly anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and step this mast it just slides right over that piece of pipe. And then I have a rope loop through the boom, through the sprit. And I'll show you this a little bit more detail later, just with a piece of vinyl tubing over it. And that's what rides up and down on the mast. So this is that loop of rope that's, that goes, that's knotted on each end, goes through the sprit boom, which is eight feet long. And it's centered about 30 inches up from the end. And then we'll just be tighten these wing nuts on the mass partner, and that just keeps everything secure. So on the the boom, the rigging, that's both of those booms are eight feet long, and then the mast is eight feet too. So everything's eight feet. So I'm not going to raise the sail yet until I attach the the lee board, so I can show you how that goes because I don't want to hoist the sail and have this thing sailing across the yard before I have everything on it. When I originally designed, well, I shouldn't say designed this, when I originally kind of made this thing up, I didn't quite understand all that I know now about the center of effort on the sail and the center of lateral resistance and all that business. Anyways, the, the lee board bracket I had made <laughs> went right amidships, right in the center. And it was longer, I've since cut it back. But I could not sail this thing to windward to save my life. It was so frustrating. I'd have to paddle, <laughs> I'd paddle into the wind, up, upwind as far as I wanted to go with the paddle. Then I'd raise the sail and I'd run back with the wind. Now, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a sail because it's not hard to paddle with the wind. You hardly have to. But paddling against the wind is what the sail should be for to avoid having to do that. So what I did is I, I moved it forward. So it sets, it straddles the forward thwart, which on my ripple designs after this canoe, they don't have two thwarts. They have only a center one. So what I did is then I have just carriage bolts that go on either side of that. And then 
just a wooden block and you have to mark I have starboard and port you want to make sure you get the right ones because because you're unless you're a lot better than I am you're not going to have the holes line up the same for each one so then just a washer and a wing nut on each end you get the idea so then this block of wood that I have a piece attached underneath that that fits underneath the gunnel so that it but I don't really need that now with this new design but anyways it keeps it in place there so I have some brackets epoxy welded onto this vertical piece and then this longer face piece and then just a 5 16 carriage bolt stuck through there and then so the the lee board then just attaches oops sorry about that so just another wing nut we lost without wing nuts with this this rig so and then i kind of fashioned a little handle on the top of it. it's just half inch plywood that i i shaped into a, a nice lee board and this thing i can move up and down from my sailing position without causing problems so we're all ready to hoist that sail okay so now this is designed so that i can i can raise the sail and lower it from the cockpit and so i didn't show you but i have a pulley mounted at the head of the, of the mast and then i put some pex tubing down at the bottom here where the halyard runs through the mast and comes out and it comes out at a downward angle so it doesn't abrade and get stuck and everything so we just hoist it up and then i have a cleat right here and i just cleat that off and it's handy enough so that i can i probably should just have a cam cleat on there but kind of cheap but then this is the sheet So now I'll take you around and show you everything here now that I got everything out ready to sail. So once again here's my rudder design. My lee board, which is I believe that's about three feet, if I remember right. And then my sail. And it's like I said, the, the booms are the the sprit boom and the whatever you call that thing is they're eight feet so the sail which is just just plastic tarp just I wanted the green ones green on both sides and then I used that tarp tape along the edges and I put some did I put some rope in there no there was some rope in there on the sail already in the factory made but I just used that tarp tape and then I just put some grommets every foot and then just lashed it to the boom. So it's like seven feet, 10 inches by seven feet, 10 inches by seven feet, 10 inches, I think is about what, what it turns out to be. But the darn thing sails really nice. It's a, it's a blast and I wish I had time to take you out on the lake but I don't. So the best I could do is set it up in the yard. So we're going from bright sun to my ultra tidy workshop. But here are the forms. I just built these forms for Ripple 2. And they're the same forms. They're not the same forms. This is half inch particle board. The old design needed three quarter inch because I use screws. This I just use nine sixteen staples. And so this is the strong back or the platform. It's only 16 inches wide versus the old one was like 40 some inches. Anyways, I just popped the canoe off these forms today. So here it sets. So the big difference between the original ripple, which was planked, cut from two by fours ripped into quarter inch thick strips. This is four millimeter Okume plywood that is scarf joined in the center to give 
he does a 16 foot strip by one inch high and then just four millimeters thick and so those are bent around that form so it's all fiberglass six ounce fiberglass on the outside and a few few layers of some thickened epoxy and then some epoxy on the back and the outside and then I just put the gunnels on yesterday just rough put them on this is just a temporary brace that I put across just to keep the true 36 inch beam when you pop it off the forms it tends to want to pop together a couple inches so then I just put a I did some sanding on the interior which is going to stay bright and so I just put a coat of slightly thickened epoxy resin on the entire interior and then the interior then is going to be sheathed in six ounce fiberglass so it will be a composite boat with fiberglass plywood fiberglass the entire canoe is going to be built from four millimeter in this case okume four millimeter marine plywood it's like 90 95 bucks a sheet now which isn't as outrageous as it used to sound but that's it next thing after the inside is fiberglass build the seats build the put the in wall in the interior gunnel build the thwarts the thwart the center thwart the bow plates and that'll be it so I hope somebody got something out of this you know just uh, sharing ideas I'm certainly not an expert I've made lots of mistakes oh <laughs> jeez, yeah but eventually things work and this thing works really well now it sails points so close to the wind I can't I, it's just so much fun so those of you who have better ideas yeah, it's fun to share them so until next time, it's Mark again with Backwood Basics. Let's grow together.